All right, thanks everyone for joining us today for our Matt Pilates class for our core stability session this week. So excited to have you all join us. We are going to do the classical Matt Pilates. So the routine and exercises are built for us already. We'll go through them, uh, adding modifications. Uh, because this is a flow, I'm gonna keep going, but please interrupt me, ask any questions. Um, if you're confused, I want you to make sure that you're feeling good about it. If anything hurts, please stop doing it, modify, um, take breaks whenever you need. After we go through the flow, we'll do some core circuits and some stretches to end our session. So with that, I'm going to play some music. There's no words to this music, um, but if it's too loud, please let me know. I want to make sure you can hear my voice over it and that it's not distracting. So here's the music. Is this good or bad? Over my voice. Okay. And if that changes, just let me know. So let's start on the ground. So I am getting on my back here. Feet are flat on the floor, knees pointed towards the ceiling. Head and shoulders are rested. Arms are by my thighs, palms face down. From here, bring your knees into your chest and then lift your forehead towards your knees. We're going to do hundreds. Lift your arms up off the ground just a few inches so they are aligned with your hips. Your shoulder blades should be off the ground and extend your option to extend your legs to a 45 degree angle. You can keep them, your knees bent over your hips if you would like. 400s, let's pump our arms up and down just a few inches vigorously. Breathing in for five pumps and then breathing out for five pumps and repeating. So in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five. In, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five. Keep that pace, deep breath. Push your low back into the ground. Shoulder blades stay high, bringing your forehead towards your knees to help engage those muscles. Extend your legs long if they're in the straight position. And a few more sessions, or a few more pumps, a few more rounds here. And pause your arms, bend your knees into your chest and rest your head. Next move is going to be roll up. So options here are to do the roll up as I describe it option to do crunches and option to do sit-ups. So choose your option, whatever you would like. For a roll-up, the standard way is to have your legs extended long on the ground, toes point towards the ceiling. Lift your arms up overhead so fingertips point towards the ceiling. Your hands are above your shoulders, arms extended long. Then you're going to Pull your belly button down towards your spine and roll up, head, neck, shoulders, and then back up off the ground, reach towards your toes, and then roll back down one vertebrae at a time until you're in that laying position and repeat. Rolling up one vertebrae at a time, reaching towards your toes, coming back down and repeat. If your legs are extended and you're doing this roll up, Trying to keep your heels on the ground the entire time you're going through the warm up, uh, through the roll up to keep your legs down to engage the full abdomen wall. <clears throat> if you're choosing to do those sit ups, those crunches, making sure you're pulling from the core so you're relaxing your neck. Let's do one more wherever you're at. Let's all meet lying flat on the ground. We're gonna go into single leg circles. So from your laying down position, hands are by your side, palms push down into the ground, low back pushes down into the ground, hips push down into the ground, head is rested. Bend your right knee in towards your chest, 
and then point your toe, extending your right leg long, pointed towards the ceiling. So left leg is down on the ground, pushing into the ground, right leg points up towards the ceiling. We're always gonna cross our body first when we do single leg circles. So we're gonna start counterclockwise on our right. So you're gonna do a circular motion down to the, uh, across your body, so to the left, down, around, and up. We're gonna do about five circles. The key here is to push your spine into the ground, push your hips, push your palms into the ground to keep your whole body still. The only thing moving is your leg in its hip socket. And when you're ready, you can reverse direction. So now clockwise. If your hips are moving, make your circle smaller. If you're feeling really stable, make it a little bit bigger. When you're done, bend your knee in towards your chest. Extend your right leg long on the ground, and then we switch. Bend your left knee into your chest. Extend your left leg long. Left toes point towards the ceiling. Pushing your palms, your hips, your back, and your right leg into the ground. Now we go clockwise first because we're going across our body. So cross your body down, around, and up, making a circular motion with your leg about five times. If you do a little more, a little less, no worries. And when you've done five or however many you'd like to do, then we'll switch directions. So I'm gonna do one more and reverse directions. Keeping your hips pushed down into the ground, pushing your palms into the ground, waking up our hip socket here. All right, when you finish, bend your left knee into your chest and then extend it long on the ground. From here, we're gonna come to a seated position. I'm going to choose to do a roll up. So I'm gonna squeeze my legs together, arms to the ceiling, and reach forward towards my toes. Now I'm up in a seated position. Next exercise is rolling like a ball. So this one is very, very challenging. So feel free to take the challenge or you have the option to do sit-ups or crunches. So rolling like a ball, sit at the front edge of your mat and hug your, bend your knees, feet flat on the ground, knees point towards the ceiling. Hug your arms around your legs. So my hands are gonna hug around my ankles. And I'm gonna tuck my chin to my chest, forehead towards my knees. So I have a little bit of a round in my spine. And from here, you'll roll back just to the tips of your shoulder blades. And then immediately when you get to the tips of your shoulder blades, you roll back up. Options here is you can grab behind your knees which gives you just a little bit more space so that when you roll back, you can roll up a little bit easier. Also option to do those sit-ups, those crunches. So take a couple rolls or a couple sit-ups, a couple crunches, massaging out the back. The most important thing here is that you're using your core to get up. You're not using momentum. Keeping that chin tucked will help with that. After you're done rolling like a ball, we're gonna come back to a lying down position. So conclude whichever one you're on and come to that lying position on your back. From this lying position on your back, we are going to go into a single leg stretch. So. Bend your knees in towards your chest. Take both your hands and wrap them around your right shin. Extend your left leg onto a 45 degree angle, so left leg goes straight, right knee is in towards your chest. Curl your, curl your forehead to your knee, and from here, we just switch sides. So extend right, hug your left in, and switch. So one leg is extended to that 45 degree angle, one leg is being hugged in. 
With our shoulder blades off the ground here, we're still engaging our core, and you can feel the difference in your core each time you switch legs. Taking deep breath, single leg stretch. A couple more on each side. And bend your knees into your chest, rest your head. From here, we're going to go to double leg stretch. Take your hands and put them by your hips, or rather, grab your shin. One hand on each shin. Curl your forehead back towards your knees to bring your shoulder blades up off the ground. Sorry, there's an ad in the music. So, once you're curled up, your forehead is curled up, shoulder blades are off the ground, extend your arms and legs long. So legs send, extend to that 45 degree angle, arms extend back behind your head. Still keeping your shoulder blades lifted is a challenge here. And then bring your knees back into your chest, circle your arms around, grab your shins again. And we repeat. Extend your legs long, arms go behind your head, and circle your arms back in, hug your knees to your chest. This is double leg stretch. Continuing at your own pace. Keeping those shoulder blades up during these repetitions is the challenge. So if you need to take a break, take a break. Let's do two more here. And then we'll move on to single straight leg stretch. All right. When you're ready, knees uh, ready to end this one, knees are bent into your chest, head gets rested. Now we go into single straight leg stretch. So your knees are bent in towards your chest, head is rested. Extend your left leg long on the ground. You can choose to hover your leg if you'd like later. Extend your right leg so your, your right toes are pointed towards the ceiling. Right leg is straight. Curl your forehead towards your knees so that your shoulder blades come off the ground. And reach your hands as close to your right ankle as you can. Mine, I'm feeling a little tight today in the backs of my legs. So mine are just going above my knee and that's okay. Now I'm gonna lift my left leg to 45 degree angle. So right toes point towards the ceiling, left leg is at a, nine, uh, a 45 degree angle. Both legs are straight. Now I'm going to pull my right leg towards me twice. Pull, pull, just a tiny little pull, and then I'm gonna switch. Pull, pull my left leg and switch. Pull, pull my right leg and switch. Keeping those shoulder blades off the ground again is the challenge here. If you're feeling tension in your neck, Push your low back into the ground. That should help relieve some tension. Continue switching. Is single straight leg stretch right here. And you start on your right, so end at your left wherever you are. Bend your knees into your chest and rest your head. We go into double straight leg stretch. So head stays rested for this one, nice little break. Palms go down, on, facing down next to our hips, pushing down in your palms, pushing down in your low back, resting your head, neck, and shoulders. Point both legs, keeping them together towards the ceiling. So legs are squeezed, straight, and pointing towards the ceiling. You're gonna lower your legs to a diagonal for the count of three, and then on the count of one, you'll lift them back up towards the ceiling. So squeezing together, lower, two, three, lift, one. Repeat, lower, two, three, lift, one. Keep going. We're gonna bring the push your low back into the ground. If your low back comes off the ground, limit your range of motion. The most important thing here is the core work, and the legs is extra. So keep that in mind, safety first, to get the good form. One more, wherever you're at. Once you lift for the last time, bend your knees in towards your chest. 
Next up is our crisscross. After crisscross, we get a little break to shake it out. Take both of your hands and stack them on top of each other behind your head. So I have my left hand behind my head, my right hand is right behind my left hand. My elbows are bent out to either side. Crisscross is very similar to bicycle crunches if you are familiar with those. So, I have both my knees bent in towards my uh, chest. I'm going to curl up I'm so my shoulder my blades Vegamore. come up healthier, off the ground. Vegamores grow here. Sorry about that. Shoulder blades are off the ground. My opposite shoulder is going to pull towards my opposite knee. So, I'm going to extend my left leg out to a 45 degree angle. Left shoulder comes towards right knee, keeping your shoulder blades lifted as best you can, and then switch sides. Right shoulder to left knee, and continue switching. Now moving at your own pace, as you switch opposite shoulder to opposite knee, you're wanting to keep lifted between each switch as best you can. This is really engaging these core muscles. We are working them hard already. So if you feel fatigued, that means you're doing it right. Nice job. Do a couple more wherever you're at. Keeping those elbows wide, right? Having those elbows wide challenges us more. Our hands are just there so that we don't have neck strain. Our hands are not helping us come up. All right, wherever you're at, end pointed to the left. Rest your head, knees are bent into your chest. That is the end of our first set. So if you need to get a drink of water here, please do so. How is everyone feeling? Good. Tara, when knees are bent into the chest, our, our feet are off the ground, right? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Okay. Yes, thanks for clarifying that. Okay, well, let's get to it. I just got a drink of water. <laughs> um, so we're going to go into fine stretch forward. So um, this is another one where you can add the roll-ups in. I'm going to add the roll-ups, but if you want to stay sitting upright, please feel free to do that. So sitting in a comfortable position, have your feet about as wide as your mat. Um, if you don't have a mat, just a little bit wider than your shoulders. I'm going to teach it with the roll-up, but just sit up straight if you're not including the roll-up. So my arms point towards the ceiling. I roll up one vertebrae at a time. Head, neck, shoulders, spine. Sitting up tall once I get to this position, toes point towards the ceiling. Extending my arms past my toes. My nose points to the ground between my knees. Arms stay parallel, so my arms aren't down at my toes. My arms are still hovering over my legs. And then you sit up nice and tall and straight. And if you choose to go back into that laying down position to roll up, and you'll do that and repeat. Otherwise, continue to sit up straight. And reach forward. Holding it for a few breaths, and then sitting up nice and tall and repeating. Nice job. Arms always hovering. Trying to reach past your toes if you can. Some days I can, some days I can't. I'm just gonna do one more here. Get a good stretch in wherever you're at. And then I am going to roll down to a lying down position. So when you're ready, come to that lying down position. Hands by your sides, palms face down, pushing down into the ground. Head and shoulders are rested. Bend your knees in towards your chest. So yes, your feet come off the ground to allow you to do that. Point your legs, point your toes towards the ceiling so that your legs are straight. We're going into corkscrew. So with corkscrew, it's important that you're pushing your hips 
and your palms, your shoulders, your spine down into the ground. You want your upper body to be completely still during this exercise. Again, the only thing moving is your leg. So we're gonna go to the right and then to the left. So we're circling, circle your legs down, around and up, and then reverse your direction. The size of your circle should depend on whether or not your hips are stable. If your hips are wiggling a little bit, maybe make that circle smaller. If you're feeling good about how stable your hips are, make those circles bigger. Again, pushing your spine back into the ground, reversing directions each time. A full perfect circle here, no ovals. Nice job. If you're feeling tight in your hips, limit your range of motion. And bend your knees in towards your chest. Let your feet fall to the ground. We're gonna come to a seated position for our next exercise. So again, feel free to do that roll up with me or do your best to just get up into a seated position in the most comfortable position for you. So I'm gonna do that roll up again, arms towards the ceiling, reaching towards my toes. Now we're going into our next move, which is called saw. This thread is so Tax credit. This video Maybe. was supposed Filing to be ad free and it's not. And I listened to like 30 minutes of it before this. Um, but before this session, I didn't get a single ad, but of course now I do. So sorry about that. We're sitting in an upright position. Legs are about as wide as your mat. For saw, have your arms out into a T shape. Sitting up nice and tall, elongating through your spine. So almost as if you're pulling your, um, the top of your head up towards the ceiling. Arms are in that T shape. We are going to first twist and then reach. So I'm going to twist towards my right and my arms twist with me. And then I'm going to reach so that my, it's called saw as if your pinky toe is gonna if your pinky finger is going to saw off your pinky toe. So you're reaching for your opposite pinky towards opposite pinky toe. And then come back up and then come back to center and then we switch sides. So keeping those arms in that T position, turn to the left, opposite arm reaches towards opposite toes, come back up and back face forward and repeat on the other side. So your arms are acting as a saw motion. Going at however deep feels good to you. Making sure we're being cheerful, monitoring how we're feeling. Taking this time to really breathe. So exhale when you reach down, inhale when you come up. That might help you get into your stretch just a little bit deeper. A couple more on this side. And then we come and we roll over onto our stomach. So next uh, exercise is gonna be swan. So wherever you're at, finish out your stretches and come to the front side of your body for swan. So, I am laying on my stomach, chest, legs are down. Put your hands beneath your shoulders, palms face down. Elbows are tucked back to point back towards your toes. For swan, we're focusing on strengthening the muscles in our lower back here. So with that, push your hips towards the ground and then pull your belly button up towards your spine. It's gonna feel a little funky at first, but it'll make sense in just a second. So hips down, belly button up. Now arch your back so that you're pulling your chest off the ground, just as far as is comfortable, not using the help from your hands. So all the strength is coming from your low back here, but not straining. As far as you're comfortable. Now, 
with that help, lift your, so lift your hands off the ground and feel what it's like to stay there. Put your hands back on the ground and now use your arms to push your chest off the ground just a little bit further, but still comfortable. Now anchor your legs, push them down into the mat, push your hips down, pull your belly button up, lift your hands off the ground again, trying to maintain that position, and then put your hands down, rest your chest down. We're gonna do that again. So, without using the help from your hands, chest comes up off the ground, lift your hands a little bit so you're feeling that engagement in your back, lower your hands back down. Now with the help of your hands, push your hands down, lifting your chest a little bit higher, lift those hands up off the ground, bring them back down and rest your chest. One more time, lift your chest off the ground, lift your hands, hands go down, push hands up, chest lifts higher, lift your hands, maintain that position and rest coming down. Now wiggle anything out that you need, shake it out. That is the end of swan. Next up is single leg kick. So for single leg kick, elbows come underneath your shoulders. Take one hand in a fist and wrap your other hand around the other end, uh, around your fist. So this is basically just keeping your hands in a comfortable position. From here, single leg kick, you are going to kick your right heel back towards your glute, and then bring it back down and switch. Left heel kicks towards the glute, bring it down and switch. So go ahead and switch kicks at your own pace. Kick down, kick down. This is called single leg kick. We're gonna go double time next. Really pushing your hips into the ground, pulling your belly button off the ground as you're doing the kick. Just a couple more each side. Shoulders roll away from your ears. Try to relax your shoulders as best you can. One last kick on each side. And now we go into double leg kick. So rest your right ear on the ground. I'll try to make sure my microphone can still be heard. If you have issues, let me know. Right ear comes to the ground, both hands go to your back. So both of my hands are on my lower back. My The back of my hands are touching my back and they're stacked on top of one another. From here, squeeze your legs together. Relax your shoulders down to the ground, relax your elbows down to the ground as much as you can. And then you're going to take, squeezing your legs together, you're gonna take both of your heels to your glutes. One, two, three, and then back down to the ground. From here, extend your arms back behind you, link your arms, to, or just grab your hands together and lift your chest off the ground to stretch out your shoulders. So arms extend towards your feet, chest comes off the ground, and then come back into that relaxed position. So this time left ear goes to the ground and your hands go back to your back, elbows to the ground, shoulders relax. And from here, again, one, two, three, kick. Relax your legs down. Link your hands together. Extend your arms straight behind you, lifting your shoulders off the ground, face forward. And then twist to face. Have your right ear on the ground and we repeat. So arms are stacked on our back, elbows to our sides, right ear on the ground. Three kicks, one, two, three. Extend your arms back behind you, lift your chest off the ground. Left ear to the ground. Three kicks. Nice job. After your three kicks, link your arms, lift your chest. And one more each side. Right ear to the ground. Arms on your back, elbows down by your sides. Three kicks towards your glutes, put your legs back down, link your arms, lift your chest. And last time, left ear to the shoulder, hands on your back, elbows down. One, two, three kicks, down. Extend your arms long behind you, and release. 
come to a seated position and shake everything out, whatever you need to do. Our next exercise is called neck pull. And although it's called neck pull, I really want to emphasize that we are not pulling our neck kind of backwards, I know. Um, so I'll talk you through it. So starting, this is another one with roll up. So if you choose to do sit-ups or crunches in place of these roll-ups, that's fine. Uh, your legs are gonna be uh, about mat width apart, so a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. You'll start laying down on the ground, and your hands are behind your neck, stacked on top of each other. Elbows are wide. Your hands are here just for support. Okay, so if you find that you are using your hands to pull your neck forward, Every I want you to just pause and um, maybe remove your hands from the back of your neck so that you're not straining it. I, myself, am going to have my arms, my fingers point towards the ceiling just so I can get through the roll up and then I'll put my hands back behind my head. So. In this position, roll up one vertebrae at a time. So head, shoulders, neck, spine off the ground, sitting upright. When you're in this sitting upright position, I'm putting my hands back behind my head, elbows wide. You're going to, this is where the neck pull comes up. You're going to extend, not using your hands, you're just pulling your head towards the ceiling as high as you can to extend and stretch out that neck. And as you do this, you're gonna lean back to a 45 degree angle, and then curl your spine under to come back, roll back down one vertebrae at a time to that lying down position. Again, option to do sit-ups or crunches here, that's totally fine. So again, if you're doing it with me, either hands behind head or arms to the ceiling, roll up to a seated position. I'm putting my hands back behind my head, lifting the crown of my head up towards the ceiling as far as I can, leaning back on a diagonal. When I can't lean back down anymore, rounding your spine, going back down to your shoulders. Just a couple more of these. Rolling up to a seated position, extending your head, reaching it all the way to the ceiling, going back at a diagonal. When you can't go any further, rounding your spine back down to the ground. Two more. Rolling up to a seated position, hands behind head, extending back, rolling one vertebrae at a time to come down. Last one. Roll up to a seated position, hands behind head, extending at a back diagonal. Roll down one vertebrae at a time to your lying down position. Take a deep breath if you need. Our next exercise is called shoulder bridge. So options here. Bend your knees, feet go flat on the ground, knees point towards the ceiling. Arms are by your side, palms face down. Palms are pushing into the ground as, as much as they can. First option, hips lift to the sky. So your shoulders stay on the ground, back comes off the ground, hips to the sky. Option to hold this, or option to bring hips down to the ground, hips back up. That's your first option. The second option is what I'm gonna do. From here, you can bend your right knee in towards your chest, so right foot comes off the ground. Point right toe towards the ceiling. So. Left knee is still bent supporting you, right leg is pointed towards the ceiling. So this is a lot of core, low back, glute engagement here. You can flex your foot, bring it down so that your knees are level again. Point your toe back up to the ceiling. Flex your foot, lower your leg to be level with your other leg. Point your toe up to the ceiling, two more. Flex your foot down, point your toe up. Flex your foot down, Point your toe up. I forget how many I said. So bend your knees to your chest, put your foot down, and we repeat on the left side. So again, if you're just lowering and lifting your hips, that's fine. If you're doing following along with me, hips stay lifted. 
Bend your left knee into your chest. Point your left toes towards the ceiling. Flex your foot. Lower it down to be level with your right knee. Point your toe back up to the ceiling. Flex to lower, point to lift. Flex to lower, point to lift. Couple more here. Hips staying lifted. And bend your knee into your chest. Lower it back down. And then lower your spine down to the ground. That is shoulder bridge. Next up, we're gonna come to that uh, seated position once again. So option to roll up if you would like, option to just find that seated position, however makes sense to you. Now we're in spine twist. So we just did lots of work for our lower back, so we're stretching it out here. So feet are gonna be together while we're sitting up tall. Squeeze those legs together. Legs are long in front of us. Four spine twists. Arms are going into a T shape. And here we're just twisting to face towards the right and then holding it deeper for three, two, one. Coming back center and twisting to the left for three, two, one. So go at your own pace, twisting your torso to the right, holding for three seconds, twisting to the left, holding for three seconds. If when you're twisting, you think that you can take it deeper each time you count to three in your head, feel free to take it deeper. Moving at your own pace here. Three, two, one, twisting. A couple more here. And when you're ready, come out of that, take a deep breath. We go into our side kick. So with our side kick, we'll start on our left side. So line up your body with the back side of your mat. I'm gonna rest my elbow on the ground directly beneath my shoulder. So left elbow beneath left shoulder. I'm lined up, my body is straight. My right hip is pointed towards the ceiling. I am going to, because I'm lined up with the back of my mat, I'm just gonna lift both of my feet up off the ground and bring them a little bit forward so that my body isn't exactly in a straight line. My legs are just a little bit ahead of my torso. From this position, take your right hand and put it in front of your chest or your torso, palm face down on the ground. This is gonna give you some support as we move our legs throughout this exercise. So, does everyone feel confident in this position before we keep going? No question? Okay, so we'll keep... Was that a question? Yeah, I'm, I, I kind of get lost in the, how to get to the position. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's why I asked. Okay, so lay on your left side of your body. Oh. And then left elbow goes beneath left shoulder. Okay. And then just bring your, your legs are straight, but just bring them a little bit forward so you're not in exactly straight line. Your legs are just a little bit ahead of your torso. And then your right arm, your right palm, goes in front of your torso on the ground, like in front of your chest area. And that's just gonna help you support, uh, help support your body as you move through the motion. Are there any other questions? Okay, from here we'll keep going. So it's, we're gonna mirror this on the other side after we get through. So we're gonna do side kicks First is gonna be front to back, then we'll do up and down, then we'll do circles. So, lift your top leg up off the ground. Up, it was resting, so my right leg was left, resting on my left leg. I'm just gonna lift it up to hip height. I'm gonna flex my foot. And I'm pointing, I'm gonna kick my right foot back, keeping it on the same level as my hip. Back two kicks, and then bring it forward and do two kicks. So my right leg stays on the same level as my hip. I'm just gonna extend it backward to kick twice, 
and forward to kick twice. Push weight into your right hand on the ground to help you balance here. And pull your belly button in towards your spine. That should really help stabilize your upper body as you're moving your right leg. So after these front and backs, let's go up and down. So lift your right leg up towards the ceiling and then back down to the ground. You don't have to go far in your range of motion here. Just lifting up and down, wherever feels best. How, however far you can, you know, keep your body stable, your upper body stable as you do this. Up and down, up and down. All right, from here, let's go into our small circle. So we're gonna go to counterclockwise circles. So with your upper leg, move your leg into counterclockwise circles. Your circle should not be any bigger than 12 inches long across. You're, you should feel this in your hip a little bit, strengthening your glutes. Remember, pushing into your right hand to help relieve some of that upper body tension and reverse directions. Nice job keeping that same length, same size that you did in the last one. And rest your leg. Let's switch sides. So bring your knees into your chest. We're gonna roll over to our right side. Right arm goes down. So right elbow is under right shoulder. Legs are straight. Lift your legs so that they're just a little bit ahead of your torso so you're not in a perfect line. Left palm goes on the ground in front of your left chest. If you also um, are feeling tension, you can use your right, uh, your right arm as a pillow. I forgot to mention that on the other side. You need to rest your head. Um, let's get started. Lift your left leg off the ground so it's hip height. Flex your foot. Kick forward and backward. So two kicks back, two kicks forward. Really pulling your belly button back into your spine, trying to keep your upper body still. Pushing weight down into your left hand for release. A couple more kicks and then we'll go into our, our up down. All right, let's go to our up down. So stack your legs on top of one another. Heel goes up towards the ceiling and back down. Leg goes up and back down. Job. Keep it moving. Feeling that contraction of your hip muscle, making it happen, strengthening your glutes. Nice job. Keeping it going. And let's go into our small circle. So circle backwards here, which is counterclockwise. Circles should be no bigger than 12 inches around. Nice job. Keeping that circle directly over your bottom leg. So if you wanna brush your ankles together as you come around each time, do that. And reverse direction. So clockwise this time. Feeling those glutes really fatigued here. Nice job. All right, from there, go ahead and take a rest. We are gonna go into some more low back work. So we're gonna lay on our stomachs or the front sides of our body. And we go swimming. So extend your arms long in front of you and legs long behind you. Chest is rested from here. Lift your arms, your legs off the ground. So arms extended forward in front of us, hovering off the ground. Legs extended behind us, hovering off the ground. Lift your right arm up off the ground a little bit and your left leg up off the ground a little bit. So opposite arm and opposite leg are raised. Now switch. 
So opposite arm and opposite leg are still raised, just switching sides and move at your own pace and working your way up to a flutter pace. So as fast as you can, but still comfortable. Push your hips into the ground. Pull your belly button up off the ground. Swimming. Take a few more breaths here. And then three, two, one, rest. Alrighty. That was swimming. Next is our very last exercise in our mat Pilates class is a push-up. But they do push up with a little bit of a twist. So you will come to a standing position. And I'm standing facing my mat, so I have lots of mat to work with in front of me. And you have the option here. You can stay on the ground to do these push-ups, or you can do the push-ups with the standing and the bending like I'm going to. So remember your options for push-ups. You can stay on the ground. You can do them from the wall. You can do them on your knees. Do whatever works best for you. So I'm standing tall here, arms by my side. I'm gonna lift my arms up towards the ceiling. Now I'm going to bend down, reaching for my toes. So as I bend down, my arms come down to the ground. Walking my arms out, four, three, two, one. So I'm in a plank position. Three push-ups from here. Bend your elbows back towards your rib cage. Three push-ups, keeping that torso strong. Walk your hands back to your feet. Stand up nice and tall, arms towards the ceiling. If you're doing those push-ups without this, feel free to keep doing push-ups. All right, reaching back down to the ground. Walk your hands out to a plank position. These are called inchworms. Three push-ups down, up, down, up, down, up. Walk your hands back to your feet. Arms go back up towards the ceiling. And we repeat, last round. Down, reach down towards your toes. Walk your hands out, plank position. Three push-ups, two, three. Walk your hands back. Hands go towards the ceiling. And take a deep breath. You have finished the mat Pilates sequence. So we could do more core work, but I think we're gonna go into our cool down stretches next. Just because of the time. So I'm going to halt our music here. Everybody take a deep breath. Get a drink of water if you need and come to a comfortable position. I'm going to um, start seated. We're gonna do cat cow position to cool down first. So tabletop position, which means hands underneath shoulders, knees underneath hips, flat back. Curl your chin towards your chest. Lift your back up towards the ceiling for cat. And then at your own pace, dip your belly low. Point your nose towards the whatever's in front of you, I guess. Point your nose forward and go through this at your own pace. So spine towards the sky. Dip your belly low. Deep breaths here. As you dip your belly low, hopefully you feel relief, a stretch in your core. Nice job. All right, from here, I'm going to roll back onto my back. And I'm going to hug my right knee into my chest. My left leg's gonna go long on the ground. Taking deep breaths here. And when you're here, you can play with the position that your knee points. So maybe your knee points out past outwards, past your shoulder to the side outside of your body. Maybe it comes across the body a little bit. Play around with what feels good, which angles you want to stretch it out. Deep breaths. And when you're ready, switch. Left leg. Left knee hugs into chest, right leg goes long. 
stretching it out. Deep breaths. We'll do our spinal twist here. So not our spine twist Pilates exercise, but our spine twitch twist stretch. Um, so both knees come over your hips. Arms go into a T on the ground. So palms face down, arms are level with your shoulders. Let your knees fall over to the right side. Point your nose to the left. You can um, let your knees hover off the ground if you would like, or you can bring them all the way over, stopping wherever feels best for you. Deep breaths. And bring those knees back up to that center position and let them go to the left this time. Nose points to the right. Deep breaths. All right, bring both knees back up. Give your knees a little hug, rock side to side, massaging out your low back, your spine. And after that, come up to a seated position. I'm going to roll to my side to get there. Legs extend long in front of you. Reach your arms forward to try to reach for your toes. If you reach, for your knees, shins, toes, past your toes, all of the above is great. Wherever you're at today. Deep breaths here. And if you want, you can release, sit up nice and tall and then go for another reach and see if you can get a little bit further this time. Deep breath. All right, I'm going to sit up nice and tall. I'm going to, we're doing the half butterfly stretch. So I'm going to extend my left leg out long, bring my left leg or my right leg is bent. So the bottom of my right foot is on the inside of my left thigh. Right knee is bent. Reach your left arm long down towards your left leg. Right arm comes up towards the ceiling, up and around. Right body, right side body stretch. Chest opens towards the ceiling as much as you can. Deep breaths. And then rotate so both arms reach towards your left toes. Chest points down this time. And roll it on up, switch sides. So we have left knee bent in, right leg is straight and long. Reach your right arm down long by your right leg. Left arm comes up and over towards the right to get a nice stretch on your left side. Chest opens up towards the ceiling as much as possible, as much as is comfortable to get that nice stretch on the left side of your body. Deep breaths. And rotate both arms, reach towards your right toes, chest points down. Deep breaths. When you're ready, release that, and we'll do the full butterfly this time. So bottoms of your feet go together. Knees point out to either side. You can hinge forward for a deeper stretch. Point your knees out further for a deeper stretch. Bring your feet in closer for a deeper stretch. Whatever feels good to you. And we go into child's pose to finish. So start and get into your tabletop position. So knees underneath hips, wrists underneath shoulders. Then point your knees out to either side, just as far as comfortable, bringing your toes together behind you. Sink your bottom back towards your toes. Extend your arms long towards on the ground, bringing your forehead, your chest towards the ground. 
a spine stretch here. Sink your bottom back into your heels, into your toes as far as you can. Deep breaths. And when you're ready, come up and out of that. I'll stop our recording.